So Chris Sparks mentioned to me the other day that we don't have a Charlie Boy Hopper on the website in a video form. So we're going to fix that right now. And what we're going to start with is a Tiemco 100 SPBL, uh, size 8 or 10. They don't make the 8 anymore, so I tie a lot of size 10s. And I've got a strip of 2 millimeter fly foam in tan. Um, tan is my favorite color to fish these in. But of course, you can tie them tan, olive, yellow, black. Black is actually a pretty good one. Um, and I've got it cut about as wide as the gap of the hook. It's just a strip, and it's about, well, I don't know, three inches long or so, about the length of a business card. And then I've also got just a scrap of foam that's about two by two millimeters, and obviously that one's not. It's a little bit more rectangular. It shows you how important that measurement is. It's not. Um, and I'm going to start with some Danville 3 op monocord, uh, just in a tan color. And the, the thread choice on this one is, is sort of important. I see people do this a lot. Um, you want to use the Danville. Don't use, don't use Uni. The, the round threads kind of grab into the foam rather than slide down into it. And I've talked about that on, on a couple other flies as well. But the, the flatter threads, uh, nylon threads, seem to slide onto the foam and kind of bite down into it a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, that strip of foam and my hook, and I'm going to poke the hook through the foam a half inch or so from the end, just right in the center. And I'll slide that around the hook bend, and then I'll put my hook back in the vise. And I'll take that piece of foam and kind of slide it back out of my way for the moment. Then I'll take my thread, and I'm going to start it just up here behind the hook eye, and I'll just dress the hook shank all the way back to the last straight portion of the shank. And then I'll come forward again. Once I get to the front, I'll take that scrap of foam that we reserved off to the side, and I'm just going to catch it here behind the eye, and just spiral back over all the way to the bend. And what this is going to do is create a gluing surface for us. I can cut that off back there. That's going to give us a little bit more surface area on the hook shank so that when we glue this slide together with the zappa gap, uh, it's got a little surface area to stick to. So you see that I've got my thread hanging at the bend of the hook now, and what I'll do is I'm going to bump my thread all the way to the very back there, and I'll pull my piece of foam under the hook and then slide it up to the end of that binder strip. And you can see as I do that how this piece of foam is now elevated. That's going to be important. If you don't pull it up high enough, if it sits flat like this, um, see how much more that cuts into the hook gap? We want to pull that all the way up so it's right at the apex of the bin so we've got a little bit of elevation to it. Then I'm going to pull this straight underneath the hook and measure where the hook eye lines up and poke a hole with my scissors. And I usually go from both sides there just so it doesn't tear when I push the hook eye through. And then I'll slide the hook eye through that hole. So what I've got now is the foam threaded onto the hook in two spots, just at the bend and just at the eye. Now I'll take some Zappa Gap and I'm going to run a layer of it down both sides of the of the shank, up off the extended portion and over that binder strip. Um, and you want to probably err on the thin side. You can see I'm kind of working the same drop into a, a nice layer. You can see it shouldn't be too wet. And now what I'll do before this gets too dry, because I don't want it to get crispy, I'm going to fold from the front to the back. So I'm going to fold this over and try to keep it even edge to edge. And when I get to the back, I'm not going to push down here. I'm going to lift up so I maintain that curve. I'll just kind of pinch everything in place for a second. It should grab. Um, you can see some of the, the portion here on the front, front of the hook, especially on your side, is not tight together. That's not a big deal. What we're worried about is this back end being stuck together well. Um, and we're good there. So now my thread is hanging on my near side, creeping out that space in the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, I'm going to hold my foam square on the hook, come up and around, and tighten this thread toward me to crease the top half of that foam, and then get another turn and another turn to create that first segment. So I've just started to build the body. You can see the, the glue started to kind of let go a little bit on that side. It's not a big deal. It'll grab. We're going to tie it down. So now what I want to do is I want to divide the remaining body on the hook into fourths. Um, and I know when you look at this, it, uh, uh, we're going to make three pieces, but we're going to have one left over at the end. So, so think fourths as you're doing your division. And what I'll do is I'm going to cross the thread forward on top of the fly. Let me back a little light off of that. I'm going to cross the thread forward on top and create the next segment. And I'll move about a fourth of the way again 
and make the next segment, and then another fourth, and make the next segment. You can see that head segment is left over at the end. So that's why the fourths were important. Now we've got our extended body sticking up back here, which is exactly what we want. And I'm going to take half of a double edge razor blade. And everybody asks me, can I use my scissors or a single edge blade? And, and the answer really is no. Um, neither one of those things are near as sharp as a double edge blade. So what I've got here is a double edge razor blade that I've just broken in half. Um, and this is a brand new one, so it's going to slice right in. But I'm going to lay it right flat on top of the body of the fly. And I'll kind of hold on to this end, but I'm just going to push it back through. And this is what throws everybody off, is everybody thinks that cut that I just made there is, is curved. Um, you can see it was actually the curve of the foam. You can see that bottom piece is still curving up. You can see where these pieces fit back together. That was curving up, but the cut is straight. It's a straight line. So once I've made that cut, and while I've got the razor blade in my hand, I'll turn the fly, and you can see the head is just a little bit wider than the rest of the body, and I want to narrow that down a bit. So I'm just going to cut a sliver off of each side just to square that head up. on both sides so it's not so rounded out and then I can set my razor blade aside so we've just squared that head off a bit now for this back end again it's a little bit wider so I'm going to use my scissors here and I'm going to cut a taper I'm not cutting it to a point but I am cutting a taper off of each side just to taper that body up a bit and you can see that's a pretty hoppery body um, this fly took a, an inordinate amount of time to, to sort of perfect, um, especially based on, uh, you know, if you know where it ended up. It, uh, I, I worked through every possible variation in the world of, of folding foam around a hook before I finally settled on this one. Um, and it's, it's quick and easy. It's super durable. So, so now we're going to put our legs in. And for the legs, I just like to use round rubber legs. These are medium size. And on the tan one, I use brown legs. Um, of course, you can alternate them. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't knot mine. I just leave straight round rubber legs. So I've just got a single strand, and my thread is hanging in that head section. So I'm going to catch this along the side of the hook just with the turn of thread. I'll turn that so you can see it. And then I'll cross my thread back to the next segment and catch that leg again there. And you can see I'm pretty minimal with the thread wraps. Don't make six or seven wraps. You shouldn't really make more than two in any of those spots. I try to make one. Uh, because we're going to build them up as we go. So I've got one leg in on my near side, and I'm going to take another strand and do the same thing in the opposite order. So I'll catch it in the back segment, cross my thread forward, catch it again, maybe throw one more on there. So we've got our legs all lined up. Now I'm going to draw these legs back, and I'm going to trim them just a little bit longer than the body, and these front legs are about two-thirds of that length. And that right there was the original Charlie Boy Hopper. Um, the catch being is this fly was really hard to see on the water. Um, so after I uh, came home from a few guide trips and, and thought about it, um, I decided to add a little tuft of deer hair on top to, to give us a little bit of profile. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to take a, a tuft of deer. Um, and this is what's sold as hopper deer now. I think they used to call it humpy deer from Nature Spirit. Um, but I'm going to take a pretty good sized bunch and I want to clean it out really well, get all that under fur out, and I'll put it in my stacker here, but I want you to get an idea of what I've got. So it's a pretty thick bunch, and obviously you can go less if you want. Um, I find that if you uh, are going to fish the fly strictly as a hopper, um, that sparse wing is just fine, but if you, if you want to fish it as a dry dropper fly and hang some, some heavier flies underneath it, a little bit of extra extra hair in that wing doesn't hurt, just creates a little bit more surface area. So I'm going to stack that bunch of hair up and I'll come in and get a measurement of this hair that's about a hook shank long, or a hook length long, I'm sorry. Um, so all the way from the eye all the way to the bend. And then I'll take that clump of hair and I'll cut it off square. So I've got the cut ends in my fingers, and you guys can see that uh, you know this is a technique I use a lot as I pre-cut the hair. Um, so I'm going to back that last turn off, and I'll set this hair in with those butts about halfway up the head, right down on top of the fly, and I'll put two turns on there. And then I'm going to put my finger against the far side, and this is just to keep that hair from rolling. I'm going to pull straight down on the thread to flare that hair in place, and you can see how that makes that nice little round tuft on the front. And then I'll whip finish 
right through those butt ends. And I kind of aim between the, the tips and the butts. Just about three turns there. Cinch that down tight and I can trim my thread out. Now of course you could fish this fly just as is, but uh, they don't cast near as accurately if you don't put eyes on them. If you have uh, a fly with eyes, he'll uh, know where he's going anyway. So I'm going to use a, this is a Copic marker, but a Sharpie will work fine. And I sort of make oval shaped spots on either side of the head. And I joke about this all the time. You know, occasionally in a demo I won't have my marker handy and I'll tie a hopper that doesn't have eyes. And most of those flies end up in my box, but I will not fish the flies without eyes for some reason. It just gives me a lot more confidence. I don't think it makes any difference to the fish. I like it, so I put them on there. Um, and that's that's it for the Charlie Boy Hopper. This this literally, if you've got all your pieces cut and uh, you know, kind of play with it a little bit, get a little bit of practice at it. This fly is about a two or three minute hopper. Um, there's not a lot of hoppers in the world that you can tie in two or three minutes, but this is one of them. Uh, super durable, super easy to see, sits up high on the water, holds holds a couple of nice droppers underneath it. Um, it's been a really versatile fly for me. Um, you know, they'll eat it for a stone fly, they'll eat it for a hopper. I think they'll just eat it for general critter a lot of the time. Um, I fish it, you know, well beyond hopper season and well before hopper season, and it still gets eaten. Um, you know, it's just a critter floating on the water. So um, I hope you like that one. Tie some of those up. Stay tuned. Somewhere along the line, I'll give you the Charlie Boy 2.0 and, and show you the, the updated, slightly bigger version, and uh, you'll fill your box up. Thank you for watching. We'll be back soon. Take care.